Welcome my friends, Evan Gray here. Thank you for joining me for this episode. Today I am camping in the high mountains of Colorado. Absolutely beautiful here. Let me show you around, but I do have a problem to talk about in this video today. Hopefully you can help me out with that. Let's roll the intro and get into it. You can see how gorgeous this is. All these pine trees up here in the mid 70s it's absolutely gorgeous here i love camping in this area all right let me talk about the problem that i'm having i just moved to this camp this morning and the last two times that i used the jack on my tongue uh, it has not been able to lift the trailer and uh, just a short distance Normally, what happens is you have a very high speed whining noise as the motor is lifting, and then as it approaches the end, it starts slowing down. I'm guessing this is a safety feature. Normally, I can get it much higher than the ball hitch on the back of the truck, but the last two times, this has been an issue. So normally, I don't even have to use any uh, plastic blocks here. I can just run this directly down to the ground, and it will lift it up at least four or five inches over the ball. That's normally not a problem. Now I'm putting four or five of these blocks here and I can't even get it to lift off of the hitch. All right, here you can see it has one, two, three, four, five blocks. And I can go up with this. And the motor is already going super slow. It's like it's losing battery power or doesn't have enough battery power. It's really strange and it won't lift it off the hitch. I can't get it to go off the hitch now, and now the motor stopped. So before you start writing comments about me having a dead battery, yes, normally this ran off of a small battery that was inside of the rig. It was just a very small like golf cart battery, and that's the way it was wired. Well, when I started building out the inside and I had my custom lithium battery bank in there, then I switched to house batteries so that I could use that space for my bedroom and my bed. So about a year ago, I rewired everything into the house battery. I have a 24 volt lithium battery and I have a full charge this morning. It converts down to 12 volts and I've been running the jack off of that for well over a year, probably 25, 30 times that I've used it and it lifts the trailer perfectly and I have at least four, five, six inches above the ball that it will lift it with no problem at all. But last two times, this time, once before, it's having a real hard time, it's struggling. And I don't think it's the battery power, that's not an issue, I go inside and look and I'm at like 27 volts or something like that, which converts down with a, um, forget what that's called, a converter, inverter kind of thing that steps it down from 24 to 12. So it puts it exactly like at 12.9 volts, which is fabulous for all my 12 volt accessories, including the jack. So I know it has plenty of power, but it's just not working right. So have any of you experienced this? Is the motor in the jack going bad? Um, what's going on here? I do have a manual thing that I can override and use that, and I may have to do that today. Well, before you start writing lots of comments, I figured out what was going on. I had the parking brake set up on the truck, and so it was sort of locked in place, so it wasn't just moving a little bit to release the uh, ball on the hitch. So anyway, I hopped in the truck, removed the parking brake, and put it in neutral, and it shifted just enough that it popped off. Let me show you. So this is what it looks like now. Um, that was just after putting the truck in neutral, it popped up. Um, you can see that it also slid on these blocks a little bit. That's a little bit concerning to me. I do have the uh, wheels blocked in really, really well. Let me show you my wheel setup. So I have these leveling blocks down here. And then I really like these. These are locks that go between the wheels and that locks up the system back here so it doesn't move very much at all. So I have that set up on both sides. And the other side I have some black rubber blocks that are holding the wheels, the wheel chocks, and holding those in place. So hopefully I've figured this out and it's not a problem with the motor. I'll have to see next time I use it if it does this again. Hopefully it doesn't. It's been probably, I don't know, several weeks or two or three videos maybe since I've given you an update on what I'm doing and progress on the trailer back here and building it out. 
First, I just want to say I am absolutely loving my deck, my rear ramp that I have set up here. I come out on this multiple times a day and the sliding glass door that I have in is wonderful. These are quality of life things for me as well as being functional and I absolutely enjoy these. Um, I'm also using this sort of as a workbench which is why I brought this up today. Um, I just work off the edge of it. It works great for cutting lumber, um, having a space to set things out, my tools and such like that, which is what I'm doing today. So what am I working on? I am working on kitchen cabinets slowly. Um, I have my interior studs put in for interior walls and that's what I sort of needed to put in place before I started on the cabinets. So I am working on two bottom cabinets and one upper cabinet. The upper cabinet is going to be for holding a microwave and the majority of my food. The bottom cabinets are going to be four foot by two foot diameter for the countertops and one of those will house a water tank primarily with a little bit of space left over. I don't know how much so I'm not planning on using that for storage. The other one will hold the kitchen sink and the pumps and things like that underneath and then I will have a set of drawers there and probably a place for uh, trash and if I can figure out a way to do it I want to slide out to hold my instant pot and things like that so that I can just slide them in and out and be able to use them and access them. I'm not the greatest at building cabinets but I do okay. In my last build I learned a lot. The biggest thing I learned is to be very very precise on my measurements particularly where it comes to the drawers. So I'm going to be doing that last so I can get warmed up there. So we're going to do the water tank cabinet and the upper cabinets first. Um, today I'm going to be putting some internal supports for some studs, uh, the cross beams so that the upper cabinet can have some supports to attach to. So that's what I'm working on today. I've finished the first of my little cross members. So these are going to go on the horizontal like this to connect the vertical beams and the way you do these steel studs is you put these little flanges on the end so that it will sock it into the uh, perpendicular vertical stud. So it'll go in like this and then you put screws through these little tabs that are hanging out here. And then on the other end, the other way you can do it is to put a flat piece up like this and then screw directly into the vertical stud with the little flap that's sticking up there. So. Both of those work. This is probably the stronger one, but um, because I'm doing these side by side in piggybacking, um, this is the better method if you're doing uh, a straight cut uh, directly across. And I can show you what that looks like once I get these installed. All right, I have the cross supports installed. I don't know what you call these things. That's what I'm calling them. And I added a piece of angle aluminum, which I pulled from my step van, uh, which I owned uh, over a year ago. And I pulled out some scrap pieces to be used for construction uh, in later builds. And so today I'm using one of those pieces. Let me show you. Okay, this is the piece of angle aluminum that I've installed here. This is going to be a lip. And above this, up here, is going to be the cabinet that I'm installing, the upper um, storage cabinets for my food and to hold the microwave. And this is the cross piece that I installed. This is the cross piece I was working on um, and I've installed that. You can see that the U piece goes around this piece here and that the little flap piece is installed down here. And the same on this one, the U shape here on this side and the little flap down here to support it. And then this one here has two U-pieces to go around this edge. So this is looking from the back side out of the bathroom, which is going to be over here, into the kitchen area, which is going to be on this side. I have everything sort of stacked here, but this is going to be the cabinet to hold the water tank. And up here on the top, I have a temporary piece of plywood. This will not be the final uh, surface for the top, the countertop of the cabinet. And then the water tank will go in this space with a single door going over 24 inches about halfway. Um, and this is one side of the L shape. And then I'll build a second cabinet which will go over here on this side. So right now I have everything piled on top of this cabinet. 
microwave's going to go in the upper cabinets up here in this area. And then I'll just have my cooktop here on this side and the sink over on this side. Behind me back here you can see the skeleton of the upper cabinet. And I had some problems with constructing this. I think it'll still work okay and be solid. It's just not going to look as pretty as I had intended. The microwave's going to fit in this space down here on the bottom right of the upper cabinet. And then all of these shelves here will be used for storing food and stuff like that. And then I'll have two doors here that will close on it to contain and hold everything in except for the microwave area, which will be uh, cut out. The back side of the microwave is going to be exposed so that there's ventilation for the fans and the back side there. So that's the plan there. And then everything else is enclosed. Problem I ran into with building this is I built it flat laying down. And then I put the back side on top of it as it was laying down and used a brad nail gun to attach it. And then after all of that, I realized that I had put the backside actually on the front instead of on the back. So I had to rip it back out and put it on there. Well, when I was building it, just to make everything flat and even, I put the nice, beautiful surfaces on what I thought was the front side, which was laying down. And that turned out to be wrong because I wanted the microwave in the bottom right corner. So I had to rip everything out and face it on the opposite side installing the backing uh, which was originally my front on the other side and that left exposed all of these surfaces here which are the ugly side of all of the pieces of wood I had so it just won't look pretty but it'll be inside of the cabinet doors so I just decided well it's not worth pulling the entire thing apart just to fix that I'm just going to go with it as is. So I still need to sand and paint this. This particular upper lower cabinet is going to be painted in a dark gray and then I'm going to use a wood sealer stain for the plywood walls inside of my rig and then put in vinyl flooring. So hopefully after it's all done it'll look pretty nice. One other thing I should mention is my microwave is slightly deeper than my cabinet but I don't think that's going to be a problem. I've accounted for that and cutting a hole and the uh, inset into the studs of the wall. I'm planning for the microwave to slightly go back there. And then the cabinet on the adjoining wall, I'm actually going to leave open so that the uh, microwave is able to vent into that area easily. Here you can see the cutout where the microwave will fit in. And that little lip there is how far in set the little vent area is going to be. That's all I have for this video. Uh, next video I'm going to be doing sanding, painting, and mounting this thing and I'll see if everything works according to plan. I'm not sure if I'm going to put the cabinet doors on before I mount it or after. It sort of depends on the hinges and I'm running into some slight problems there given that this is right next to a wall and if you do a standard hinge then the um, cabinet door is going to bind there and not be able to open all the way. So I think there's some special kinds of hinges that I need to use. I've got to go to the hardware store for that. But that's all I have. Thank you so much for watching. Savor the moment and I'll see you in a future video.